everyone and it's a lovely sunny morning here in Yorkshire today which I am very pleased about. It's wonderful to have some sunshine for the weekend and I feel I need a bit of a pick-me-up this morning because I'm a bit sleepy today. I didn't sleep very well because we had really wild gales blowing all through the night. This really big tree was blown down in a field not that far from us. Fortunately I don't think any damage was done because it blew over into an empty field but it was very noisy and it was just so windy all through the night that it kept me awake most of the night. So I'm a bit tired this morning but I've had some tea and mum and I are planning a fun outing that I've been really looking forward to today. We're going to a country manor house not too far from us called Mount Grace Priory and it's part of the English heritage and we're members of that so we're going to go to it. It's only actually open on the weekends so as it's meant to be a nice sunny day today we thought let's take advantage and go and visit. The, the gardens are meant to be nice obviously in January there's not as much to see, but it should just be a really pleasant walk and nice way to get a bit of fresh air somewhere different. So I'm looking forward to going there and I'll take my camera along so I can film a bit there hopefully too. So I'm really looking forward to that. But before we get going, I wanted to just hop on here and catch you up with my reading. So as you know, I've been reading Wintercombe, which is very exciting. It's a brilliant historical romance all about the English Civil War and I am now on page 463, doing pretty well. I'm hoping to finish this this weekend in fact. I've just started part four of the book and it's got very, very exciting there's a real villain in this one who is absolutely horrible. He's the soldier in charge of the regiment that's taken over beautiful house of Wintercombe. And Silence is the heroine. She's left in charge of the house. She's trying to protect it um, from these soldiers. But the leader of them is this ghastly man who just wants to rape and pillage his way all through the Somerset countryside. So there's been a lot of tension, a lot of drama with him. There's also this burgeoning romance with another soldier and it's all been very exciting. So I am still enjoying it. We're moving into springtime in the book as well. I think it's um, May and it's like the start of summer and that's been really nice. It's been nice reading some beautiful spring descriptions because it's making me so excited for that season but we went from real winter in the book all the way now through to spring and summer and there are so many lovely descriptions of the garden I love the domestic detail of the house and the servants and things like um how they prepared medicines and herbal teas and things like that for treatments. There's quite a lot of domestic detail and descriptions of the house, which I love. And there's also some beautiful descriptions of the garden, which I really appreciate too. Silence is quite a gardener and I really love descriptions of houses and gardens. So that's really appealing to me with this book. So I'm hoping to finish this. I like how I think the first sort of two parts of the book, um, every chapter started with a quote from the Proverbs and the last sort of remaining couple of sections, every chapter starts with a quote from Shakespeare and that really reflects Silence's journey, I think, the growth of her character from coming from quite a Puritan background. Over the course of the book, she develops a real love for poetry, language, music, dancing, um, that her sort of father and her husband, who is away fighting for parliament, would not approve of. But she really has this awakening to the delights of music and language. And so it's really appropriate that the quotes in the book change from 
very biblical to Shakespearean and I, I like that shift in it but there's some great quotes all the way through she starts to read John Donne's poetry um, and I, I really enjoy some of the quotes that are included so yes I am enjoying that I'm hoping to finish it this weekend and then I'll be able to tell you what I think of it as a whole and then I have also started Amanda Goes to Italy by Mabel Esther Allen. This was just recently brought out by Girls Gone By Publishers, which is this small independent publishing company who republish um, sort of old vintage children's books that are really hard to find now. They're mainly British children's books and Mabel Esther Allen was always a favourite of mine when I was young. She also wrote under the name Jean Estrell and I loved her Drina Ballerina books. I loved those ballet stories all about Drina. And this is about a young girl, Amanda, who has to give up her dream of becoming a dancer. Something I really empathise with because I underwent all of that when I was 14 sort of turning 15 and I got a really bad injury and I'd really wanted to be a ballet dancer but I had to sort of give up that dream and it took me a whole year before I could even walk upstairs again easily and stuff it was a really tough time in my life and I think that Mabel Esther Allen really captures that true sense of loss and of Amanda having to rediscover who she is as a person now she can no longer define herself as a dancer but she goes off to Italy and it's funny because in my life when I had all of that sort of trauma happen to me we ended up moving to Switzerland at that time and I remember what a big difference it made to sort of go somewhere new and with Amanda she goes to Italy and I, I haven't got that far yet but I think she makes some new friends and she realises that life does go on. So I'm really enjoying it, obviously it's a story that speaks a lot to me personally but I always get sent the Girls Gone By books because I take photos for their Instagram account so I'm really enjoying reading this one just in odd moments that I've had so thought I'd mention that as well. But anyway, uh, we better get going, so I definitely want to make the most of this lovely sunny day. It's the next morning and we're having a lovely cosy morning. We are. I've lit the fire. It's very well bright and cold out. Yes. So it's freezing out there. Yeah, it really yeah. is. So we've got a nice fire lit and we're feeling a lot more refreshed today, which is good. The gales have subsided. Thank goodness. <laughs> yes. No more trees down or anything no, like exactly. that. Exactly. Yes. Yeah. So yeah, we're just going to have a nice cosy morning and I thought this would be the perfect time to make some marmalade which will be a real cheat recipe isn't <laughs> it? <laughs> it is indeed. Um, but it makes such good marmalade yes, we have to say and so we're not going to keep the secret to ourselves but first I've got another recipe that I'm going to do with Seville oranges, which are of course in season right now. Definitely, and the scent actually in here, what with the wood smoke 
Yeah. And the Seville is absolutely heavenly. I wish they made candles of that. Oh, they probably, probably do, so but that would be lovely. Yeah. Wood smoke and Seville mm. orange. Yes, that needs to be a candle. Yeah. I would yeah. definitely get that candle. And it just, it smells like January. It does. In here. It does. <laughs> it smells like January. Yeah. That's exactly right. <laughs> and once we get the marmalade going, it really <laughs> will, because that <laughs> smells incredible. Yeah. So I'm excited about that. But the first recipe I want to share with you is one that I think would make great gifts if you have any sort of birthdays coming up or anything like that. But also it's wonderful to just enjoy, yeah, enjoy it yourself. So I'm going to make the Seville orange and cardamom gin that's in this fabulous cookbook, which is sour. The magical element that will transform your cooking by Mark Diacono. Yeah, and he's wonderful. I mean, we yeah. just got his latest one, which was Spice. But yeah. This is fabulous. This yeah. earlier one. Yeah, yeah, yeah we've got yeah. Spice for Christmas. Yeah. And this is his previous cookbook, which I also really recommend. And like I said, this gin sounds so good. And it uses Seville oranges and cardamom. And you really are meant to wait two months before <laughs> <laughs> before you can use it. But we're hoping maybe in time for Easter. That'd be lovely, wouldn't yeah. it? Yeah, especially if there's a bit of sunshine, we can have a G and T out in the garden. Yes, exactly. Lovely. So yeah. that's something to look forward to. Yeah. Um, and to prepare ahead. So I've already started cutting up some of the Seville oranges. This takes five Seville oranges and eight cardamom pods and also a litre of gin. <laughs> yes. And you pretty much just bung everything together. You do. Um, and then at the end you have to strain it, don't yeah. you? Yeah, when, you're, when, it's, when it's ready to be drank, drunk, that's when you do the strain. Yes, yeah. but for now yeah. we just yeah. put everything together and leave it for a couple of months yeah. and then we'll strain it and hopefully have a lovely G&T mm. <laughs> down the line. Sounds so good, we'll remember this then. Yeah, It's nice to look back. Yes, think, oh, yes, mm. exactly. Yeah. So I'm going to carry on with slicing up the Seville oranges and then I'll just put everything together. So you can see how I'm slicing the oranges. I already thoroughly washed these and I also removed the little green stalks because I don't really want those in my gin. Um, and then I just cut each orange in half and I cut each of the halves into thin slices. So I'm going to carry on and do the rest of the oranges. Jar, I think you really need a 1.5 litre and ours is a litre. I'm going to have a little bit of excess, so I'm going to try just making a really little taste of it. Yeah, <laughs> taste of one, that's a good idea. <laughs> so I'm going to just fit as many of the orange slices into here as I can. This is a sterilised jar. I'll pop these in. It does smell so good. Mmm, heavenly. Pack them in there. Yeah, pack <laughs> some cardamom in before we oh, yes. fill it. I know. Pop these in too. I love cardamom. Oh, wonderful. I didn't know with this whether you would actually shell them, but he doesn't. He just puts the whole cream yeah, just the whole. so it must like soak through into the alcohol. Yeah, just be mm. yeah, yeah. Looking so good. It isn't is it? looking good, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Mm, a little bit more, yeah. A little bit more, yeah. Try. <laughs> so once you put the liquid in, it will come up, won't it? It will. So mm. I'll just. That I don't think I can really get more in there. No. You? no. Go All for right. It. So in goes the gin. <laughs> I'm excited 
to see what's the, what this will be like in the spring. We'll obviously have to remember yes. to yes. do a G&T on the channel. Yeah. So that we can tell you. It's got that lovely glug. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but I think the, the flavour combination sounds so mm -hmm. nice. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, push that fruit down more. Oh, yeah. yeah. Just pack that in a bit. Yeah. It's good to me. A tiny bit more. There. There we go. Yeah. Super. So now I've got to just try and get what I can into yeah, it didn't, our little taster jar. It didn't take us that much as I thought no, it, it would. No, it didn't, did it? No. Maybe it's a bit smaller on a jar than we thought. Maybe. Yeah. Still. It doesn't matter. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Pop a couple extra can't yeah. pod, pods into this one. Yeah. And we'll stuff in those into the yes. two as much as we can anyway. Yeah. Stuff these in. We'll be able to just <laughs> yeah. tuck well a couple done. more in there. Yeah. Pop these in. Perhaps as it goes too, you can keep an eye on it. You can always add more gin, I bet. Yeah. You know, as you go true. along to it. Okay, I'll do this little one. You might have to buy more Seville oranges just to use up the gin. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good excuse. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, we we really converted my. Um, Canadian father and grandmother oh, did we to the pleasures of a gin and tonic. They love it. They yeah. absolutely love it. Yeah, so whenever they visit, um, G and T's are on order. They are. <laughs> they are. Plenty of I's, plenty of G and plenty of T too. <laughs> yes, that's yeah. right. There we go. Doesn't it look beautiful? It does look beautiful. I think that looks really impressive. Yeah. And We'll ha we will keep an eye on it, see yeah. if we can top up the gin yes. a bit. Yeah. Maybe the oranges will kind of mold them down, down, a, down bit a bit. More. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so we'll see if we can fit more gin because yeah, yeah, we really haven't used Just anywhere near the whole the gin we meant to. No. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll see see how that goes. Yes. But um, I'm going to just clear this bit away, and then we're going to get on with our marmalade making. Okay, now it's time to move on to marmalade making mm. and our total cheat <laughs> star ingredient. Our secret weapon in yes. marmalade making. <laughs> and that's Robertson's Marmaid Thin Cut <laughs> Seville Oranges. So obviously you can do the traditional thing and slice up loads of Seville oranges yourself and do all of the boiling and cooling and all the rest of it that takes hours and hours, which you've done. I have, I have definitely done it. And I mean, for, especially because you actually prefer thin cut to thin cut. And the chopping takes even longer <laughs> when you have a family of thin cut <laughs> Yeah, but if you want something quickly, Boy, um, is this good. And this, this is, is our so first good. time we tried this. It is, yeah, yes. just this I had a, year. had a friend who used it in France, and I always used to think, oh, that's great, I must remember about that. And then, you know, sort of slavishly went away shopping. <laughs> um, but now I'm not ever doing no, that No, we're again. total converts. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, exactly. If you if you want to spend the time, then of course do, and you can yeah. have an audio book on. And, and you can have different it. types. I used to do a tangerine, grapefruit, and lemon. Yes, one that was really yes, nice exactly. And things like yes. that. So, so you yeah. can get fancy yes. if you want to. Yes. <laughs> or <laughs> you can do, which is what I'm always going to do, I can tell you that, um, is pretty much just use the tin. <laughs> no one would know, honestly, the, mar the yeah, marmalade really is so, so good. I bet to it's better than mine, to be absolutely <laughs> honest. It it's, is. it's really brilliant. It sets mm. so well too. So yeah. Yeah, you, you pretty much, I don't know, we can just get this easily in the grocery store here. I don't know about all around the world, but if you can find tin of ready prepared Seville oranges, 
The instructions are on the back with this one. You pretty much just empty the tin into a big saucepan like this. Um, you add the, the water up to the sort of watermark on the tin. So they show you the measurement in the tin. And then you add four pounds of sugar. And then we bring it to the boil and all of that over there. But I'm just going to get the tin open. Did you want to share? Mm -hmm. um, sure. You found a lovely little extract about yeah. marmalade because people are always so opinionated about they are marmalade. Always. They like stick cut or thin cut yeah. or you know, whatever way. Yeah. And in this little book, which is Jam and Genius by Angela Milne, which is charming, it's a collection of essays, I think originally appeared in punch magazine yeah um, they've got, they're, they're very pleasant and they've got nice little illustrations and everything they do with them. Um, yeah. they were brought together this was published in 1947 and she has essays on things like kitchens museums deck chairs fountain pens but also the jam and under the jam comes a little bit about marmalade <laughs> Shall i read that yes you found it uh, along with jam i may as well mention marmalade because it is morally the same thing and breeds the same antagonism amongst those who like different kinds. Some like their marmalade or jelly as jelly, some as chunks or strips. Psychologists say that the adherents of either kind are not in the least remarkable, unless they are remarkable anyhow, so that it is no good either side putting on airs. This, I need hardly say, has no effect on the public which can never dig into a jar of its own particular marmalade without telling itself that if there were more people in the world like it, then the world would be a finer place. And psychologists say that psychologically indefensible as all this is, on the whole, it is just as well, in this case, because it makes for good temper at breakfast time. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's brilliant. I love that. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so... I'm popping the contents of the tin into the saucepan. Ooh, that looks good. It does look good. Yeah. I have to say, when it's all boiling away too, it just smells incredible. Yeah, I love it. Kitchen smells so, so good. I think that's that's one of the great joys of making marmalade, is just yes. the scent in the house that yes. we make it. And it's so nice to just spend a morning exactly on the weekend winter yes, yeah. january weekend yeah making marmalade but it also not for me anyway <laughs> being this huge production <laughs> that ends up in me being a sort of hot sticky mess <laughs> it ends up in tears <laughs> yeah <laughs> this is definitely the the pain-free way of making marmalade it is it so is. if you're a beginner then i definitely would recommend giving this a go yeah, I mean, and, and honestly, I can't tell. I think I thought it was even better than mine. It takes away some of the sort of agony of will there be enough pectin in this and all that sort of stuff. Yes. It does it all for you. Okay, so I'm going to add water to the watermark on the side of the tin. In it goes. And then I've already got the sugar this is the correct measurement. As it was so clever, she took out the 200 grams that she didn't need, rather than I would have weighed the whole 1.8 kilos. And then I'm like, oh. <laughs> just stir this in. Yeah. Okay, so I've just added the sugar. I feel like Ina Garten saying, <laughs> how easy is that? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, yeah, very, very easy this. <laughs> So then I'm just going to um, bring all of this to the boil, stirring continuously, and then once it's at boiling, I reduce the heat, maintain the boil for a further 15 minutes. And then, then you're just going to use the jam thermometer to, for the setting point. Yes, yes. Yeah. So don't even faff around um, with, with sauces um, in the fridge and things. No, the exactly. sauces I've broken was I've knocked them, <laughs> trying to get them out of the fridge. Yes. And again, I'd left one in there and everything. <laughs> yeah, no, my um, thermometer just has a jam setting yeah. on it. So when it reaches that point, I figure it all is good. So I'm stirring away. It is important to stir because you don't want the sugar to burn, so you just keep stirring. 
and it's about to come to the boiling point, so keeping stirring for now. So the marmalade is just cooling down a little bit and I have a little dram of whiskey to go into this lot of marmalade in honour of Burns Night which is coming up at the end of January. So I'm just going to pop this in now just to make our marmalade extra tasty with a little nod to Scotland. Okay, so the marmalade is made. <laughs> <laughs> does look lovely, doesn't it? It does, mm. and it did smell incredible. It still does, actually, doesn't yes, it? Yes, it does. Yes, yes. so yeah. lovely. So really thrilled to have another set. Yes, and, and seven jars. Yes, yes very, very good. good. <laughs> yeah, it will keep a few of these, and then we might give some as gifts I think as, we again will. as well. Yeah, yeah. Um, but so I want to write down that great little quote about marmalade in my commonplace book. That's great. You've got a commonplace book too, I do, don't you? I do. This one's mine. Yeah, you chose a lovely William Morris one. I did. Yeah. She's done some lovely ones, Ursula. Oh, These I are both from book. Stars Mead book binding, yeah. made by Ursula G. Kitts. And we've each got our Waco pen. Yes, yes, <laughs> exactly. I've got my pen. Yeah. And and um, I've spoken a lot about commonplace books on my channel before, but if you don't know what one is, then essentially it's a journal in which you write favourite quotes, sayings, you can write recipes, the sort that you will hear about on my YouTube channel, for instance, <laughs> or that you get from a friend or find online. Um, you can also write book lists, you can write you can poems, write poems that you want to memorise, that yes, that's, that's what, what I've been, been doing. doing. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, maybe the best thing is to share some of the things I've got written yes. in mine. So I've got quotes in here. My very first one is a quote from um, an afterword to The Living Mountain by Nan Shepherd, which is a wonderful Scottish... Um, nature book and Jeanette Winterson wrote the afterword and she has a lovely quote and she says when I can find a language for my feelings I can own them and not be owned by them I can be enriched as mind and emotion work together instead of against each other art all art is good at this essential relationship but literature finds us the words we need and we need words, not empty information, not babble, not data. We need a language capable of simple, beautiful expression, yet containing complex thought that yields up all our feelings instead of depriving us of them. And this is a quote that was given by Ursula um, with the Commonplace book. So I thought it was a really appropriate one to enter as the first one into my book. And I think that is lovely, and I think that's what's so nice about keeping a commonplace book is you start to learn what language, what use of words particularly speaks to you. 
and you get to understand yourself a bit through what you decide to record Absolutely. what sentences you love the most or it tracks your life a bit as well if you include recipes and book lists and things like that yes I think it's wonderful I love the idea of the other thing you were talking about of it being like your private garden yes your like a cold vegetable patch yeah that was yeah. from another quote that I talked about in another video that I put in here but I've also put a recipe in here, um, Gavin Plumley, who wrote A Home for All Seasons, mm. which is a book I've really recommended, mm. you really enjoyed it mm -hmm. as well, and he talks about making turnip soup yes. in the book, and I asked him for the recipe, and he very kindly gave it to me in an Instagram message, so I copied out that recipe, and I've got his recipe for turnip soup in here. Um, I've got a, re a little quote from Nancy Mitford's The Pursuit of Love, which is, Life is sometimes sad and often dull, but there are currants in the cake and here is one of them. <laughs> which, I love that quote. Love and quote. India Knight used the same, almost the exact same sentence in Darling, which is her modern retelling of The Pursuit of Love, but she just swapped currants for raisins. <laughs> That's a bit more modern. modern. Yes. yes, how interesting. Yeah, which yeah. I, I like. I really liked that. These little changes. These little changes, but it made me want to write the original in here. And now I'm going to write this lovely quote about um, marmalade. Well, but do you want to say what you've been yes, writing? Yes, of course. Yeah. yeah. Um, well, I started it on the um, at the beginning of January. So. Yes. Um, one of the um, things I, I wrote down was um, which poems I think of particularly at New Year's time. Oh, like, yeah. I mentioned like Ring Out Wild Bells. I love that poem. That's a Betjeman poem. Yeah, it is. It? it is. Yeah. Um, no, no, it's um, Longfellow. Oh, yes, Longfellow. Yes, it's, it's Longfellow. Okay. Yeah, yeah. it's Longfellow. And um, Ralph Hodgson's one called The Bells of Heaven. And the reason that I always think of that one is I I read I read the nine tailors which I usually yeah. do around New Year's and I moved on and read Busman's honeymoon as oh, well. Yes. Yeah. And Harriet Vane mentions the one that um about the shabby tigers. Oh yeah. So I wrote that one in too and oh here is the poem that I always am trying to memorize which poor you she has to listen to me <laughs> stumble through it and give me the odd quote but I love the one that shapes me as when icicles hang by the wall mm, that one yes, um, yes. I think it's a fabulous winter yes. poem I'm really keeping a good. separate notebook for winter specific quotations so I've not got a lot of seasonal ones in no, this but no. I love to have those too and obviously they're nice to put in your comments. It's, lo but it's lovely. And then when you mentioned um, one of your favourite books was The Carlisles at Home. Yes. It reminded me that I read in that that um, Lee Hunt had visited and that his famous poem that I can say off by heart, <laughs> Jenny Kissed Me When, um, when We Met. Yes. Um, was actually about Jane Carlyle, yes, which I thought yeah. was a lovely thing. So I yeah. wrote that poem out and a little um and yeah. a little note. So little things like that yeah. I'm putting in. I I should put some recipes in. You know how I'm always tearing things out of things, yeah. and I think I think that would be really nice to do as well. Yes, so. it's just a nice way to keep all of these little snippets. And I guess it's all different together. from a diary. In the diary, you're really recording day to day things like. Mm doctor's appointments, dentist appointments, things like what the weather's like, what you're doing, birthday parties and stuff. It's more practical, yes, isn't it, in a yes, way? Yes, it is. Whereas this, I feel, you're, you're, you could have a flight of fancy Exactly, and a lot of people write nature journals or, mm -hmm. um, you know, specific topic journals. A commonplace book isn't really about your own writing. No. It's about your favourite writing of other people. So that's also how it's different exactly. from the regular journaling as and well. I think I mean, you can put you could, your you own poems whatever or whatever, you, want. you can do yeah. whatever you want. However, I yeah. think journaling and diary keeping is definitely meant to be regular, whether yes. it's daily or you have a, a weekly one or whatever. Yeah. Whereas I think with the commonplace book, it's 
if and when and wherever you feel exactly. yeah. yeah. and you don't yeah. have to feel guilty if no. you don't write in it every no. day or even every week or even every month you exactly. can keep one over years and just um, contribute little bits to it whenever you feel like it. And I think people have said to you they have and you think how fascinating you could look yes. back and see what caught their fancy when they were, I don't know, 30 compared to what caught their fancy when they were 50. Yes. This type of thing would yeah. be wonderful. Yes, definitely. Mm. I think it's a lovely memento to keep of, of your life essentially yeah. yeah i'm so thrilled to have one i think these are so beautiful Me too. yes obviously yeah. you can keep you can choose any kind of notebook i've gone for lined you don't have to you could get plain you could also yeah. draw in your yes. commonplace book have lovely little sketches i'm not artistic so i don't do that no, but, but um and i have a lined one but I like these because they have commonplace book marked on the side, but obviously you can get whatever notebook you like. Um, but I will link again to Stars Mead book bindings. I think hers are fabulous. But I'm going to enjoy our tea, mm. write in my commonplace book a little bit, and yeah. enjoy the enjoy the fire, which fire is too. toasting me nicely <laughs> in my nether portions, as they say. Yes. <laughs> Lovely. Good morning everyone, it's the next day and I'm hopping on to finish off this vlog. I'm having my morning cup of tea, very appropriate in my Emma Bridgewater marmalade <laughs> mug and I'm having some of the new marmalade on my toast this morning and it is so good. I'm so pleased, honestly, I just love this way of making marmalade, it's so easy. This is now the second batch we've done and the set is so good on the marmalade. I really, really love it. This version with a bit of whiskey in it, I have to say, is very, very tasty too. So I'm thoroughly enjoying my breakfast today. But I also just wanted to chat to you about Wintercombe because I finished it last night. I so enjoyed it. It was such a gripping, fast-paced read and it makes you want to read more. I do actually have the second book in the series which is called Herald of Joy. Here it is and in some ways I'm very tempted to go on and read this one next because Wintercombe definitely ends in a way, it's not exactly a cliffhanger, but it ends in a way that makes you want to know more and to keep following the stories of the characters, particularly Silence, the main character whom I love, and Nick as well, Oh, and all of the children and everything. Yes, you really do want to keep reading and finding out what happens to them all. So I am tempted, but this one, Herald of Joy, starts in May and it looks like it's a really summery read to me. It's sort of mainly set in the summer months. So I think I'm going to hold off and wait and try and remember to pick this up in May because I think I'd like to read it then and I've got some other more wintry reads that I want to get through in January. So I don't think I'll go on to read this next but 
it is tempting. And yes, if you love sort of historical romances, then I would definitely recommend giving Wintercombe a try. As I've said before, it's the first in a series of four books and I highly recommend it. It really was an engrossing read, great for the long winter evenings and I loved the wintry descriptions, particularly at the start of the book. They were fabulous and it's also made me want to read more about the English Civil War and I was sort of scanning my bookshelves to see what I might read next on that sort of topic and I did remember that Pamela Gregory's most recent series, I think there are three books in this series now, and these are set also during the English Civil War. So Tidelands is the first one and it's set in England 1648, whereas I think Wintercombe was set in 1644. Yes, so part one starts in October 1644 and it goes to 1645. So this begins just a few years on and I think it would make really good reading. I've been wanting to get to this series for ages actually. So I also want to read this one, but this one also starts in the summer. It starts at midsummer actually. So I might again, I might save this for once I've read Herald of Joy, then I might move on to this one as it's got a lovely summery start. I mean, obviously you don't have to choose every book as a seasonal read and there's no reason to do that. But like I said, I do have some wintry books that I want to get to first and Herald of Joy definitely looks very summery to me. This starts in midsummer, so I think I will wait and read these a bit later in the year. Um, because I do like a bit of seasonal reading and I have more wintry ones that I want to get to first but I'm really pleased that Wintercombe has inspired me not just to read more by Pamela Bell but also to pick up this Philippa Gregory book finally as well. I'm really interested to see how Philippa Gregory as a more modern historical writer too, has sort of tackled this time period and what the sort of storyline to her books are. I mean, it's nice it's another series too, so it'd be quite interesting to compare the two series and see which one I like the most in the end, um, how different they are and things. So yeah, I think that will be a fun project sort of ongoing this year to make my way through both of these. Sorry, my camera battery died there. But yes, as I was saying, do let me know if you've read Tidelands and what you think of it, because I'm interested to know about that. Looking forward to getting to it soon. I also just wanted to tell you about another book that came in the post. Um, I told you in the last video that I had got um, Catherine Mansfield's new biography, All Sorts of Lives by Claire Harmon. And when I came to look at this, I realized that the biography is structured in quite an interesting way, in that Claire Harmon takes, um, I can't remember if it's, I think, yeah, it's 10 short stories of Catherine Mansfield. And she writes a bit about the story, but then also about what was happening in in Catherine Mansfield's life at the time and the sort of backstory to each short story and she weaves the short stories in with the story of Catherine Mansfield's life. So I thought that was really intriguing sounding but I also realised that I'd get very frustrated if I couldn't read the short stories that were being referred to in the biography and none of the collections that I had had all of these Catherine Mansfield short stories, but a new volume of Mansfield's short stories has come out, and in fact it's edited by Claire Harmon, who has written the new biography, and it's called Wild Places, Selected Stories of Catherine Mansfield, and this one has all of the stories that are featured in the new biography, as well as others as well. So I was really happy to get this. I really would like to read um, the biography soon and 
definitely I will want to read the short stories at the same time as I'm reading through the biography so I'm glad to have this ready. It's a very attractive edition too so I was really thrilled with that. And then just before signing off entirely too, I wanted to show you these. So this is the Seville orange and cardamom gin that I made yesterday that is just steeping away there. But because we had leftover gin, I think I probably packed too many oranges into this. I mean, I kind of went by the recipe, but it was just the number of oranges rather than a weight or anything. So maybe mine were extra big ones or I don't know, because I didn't have quite the right size jar too. Maybe that also affected things. But so we had leftover gin and what we decided to do was just to use the variety of oranges that we had lying around too. So I have some blood orange in here, a bit of leftover Seville orange, and I think some ordinary oranges as well. And I've put these in with the leftover gin and some more cardamom pods too. And I thought it would be really interesting to try this one as well and see if we can taste any difference and what we like the most. So yes, I'm really excited to see what these will be like in a couple of months and yeah to see how this one turns out too but anyway that's it from me today thank you so much as always for watching my videos i hope that you're all having a wonderful week and have a great weekend ahead of you extra big thanks to those of you who pressed the super thanks button on my last video i so appreciate your support but i really appreciate all of the lovely comments and the likes and everyone who watches my videos. I really am very grateful and I'm so glad you're enjoying the vlogs. But yes, I hope you're having a wonderful week and I'll see you again on Sunday. Goodbye.